Chapter Thirteen of Glengarry School Days. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bruce Peary. Glengarry School Days by Ralph Connor. Chapter Thirteen. The First Round. The challenge from the front was for the best two out of three. The first game to be played the last day of the year steadily under craven's coaching the twentieth team were perfected in their systematic play for although craven knew nothing of shinny he had captained the champion lacrosse team of the province of quebec and the same general rules of defence and attack could be applied with equal success to the game of shinny the team was greatly strengthened by the accession of thomas finch and don cameron both of whom took up the school again with a view to college with thomas in goal hughie said he felt as if a big hole had been filled up behind him the master caused a few preliminary skirmishes with neighboring teams to be played by way of practice and by the time the end of the year had come he felt confident that the team would not disgrace their school his confidence was not ill-founded we have covered ourselves with glory he writes to his friend ned maitland for we have whipped to a finish the arrogant and mighty front i am more than ever convinced that i shall have to take a few days off and get away to montreal or some other retired spot to recover from the excitement of the last week under my diligent coaching in which knowing nothing whatever of shinny i have striven to introduce something of the lacrosse method our team got into really decent fighting trim under the leadership of their captain who has succeeded in infusing his own fierce and furious temper into his men they played like little demons from the drop of the ball till the game was scored furious is the word for they and their captain play with headlong fury and that i might say is about their only defect for if they ever should run into a bigger team who had any semblance of head about them and were not merely feet they would surely come to grief i cannot stay to recount our victory let it suffice that we were driven down in two big sleigh loads by thomas finch the back wall of our defence and don cameron who plays in the right of the forward line both great strapping fellows who are to be eventually i believe members of my preparatory class the front came forth cheerful big confident trusting in the might of their legs we are told that the lord taketh no pleasure in the legs of man and this is true in the game of shinny not legs alone but heart and head win with anything like equal chances game called two thirty captain hughey has the drop seizes the ball passes it to fusey who rushes passes back to hughey who has arrived in the vicinity of the enemy's goal and shoots swift and straight a goal time thirty seconds again and again my little demons pierce the heavy solid line of the front defence and score the enemy big and bewildered being chiefly occupied in watching them do it by six o'clock that evening i had them safe at the manse in a condition of dazed jubilation quite unable to realize the magnificence of their achievement they had driven twelve miles down played a two hours game of shinny score eight to two and were back safe and sound bearing with them victory and some broken shins equally proud of both there is a big supper at the manse prepared i believe with the view of consolation but transformed into a feast of triumph the minister being enthusiastically jubilant over the achievement of his boys his wife if possible even more so the heroes feed themselves to fullness amazing and complete the minister holds a thanksgiving service in which i have no doubt my little demons most earnestly join after which they depart to shed the radiance of their glory throughout the section and now i have to recount another experience of mine quite unique and altogether inexplicable it appears that in this remarkable abode i would call it the saint's rest were it not for the presence of others than saints and for the additional fact that there is little rest for the saint who makes her dwelling here in this abode there prevails the quaint custom of watching the death of the old year and the birth of the new it is made the occasion of religious and heart-searching rite 
as the solemn hour of midnight draws on a silence falls upon the family all of whom with the exception of the newest infant are present it is the family festival of the year and what will they be doing at your home mr craven inquires the minister the contrast that rose before my mind was vivid enough for having received my invitation to a big dance i knew my sweet sisters would be having a jolly wild time about that moment my answer given i feel in a somewhat flippant tone appears to shock my shinny captain of the angelic face who casts a horror-stricken glance at his mother and waits for the word of reproof that he thinks is due from the padre's lips but before it falls the mother interposes with they will miss you greatly this evening it was rather neatly done and i think i appreciated it the rite proceeds the initial ceremony is the repeating of a verse of scripture all round and to save my life nothing comes to my mind but the words remember lot's wife as i cannot see the appropriateness of the quotation i pass five minutes before the stroke of twelve they sing the scottish paraphrase beginning o god of bethel i do not suppose you ever heard it but it is a beautiful hymn and singularly appropriate to the hour in this i lend assistance with my violin the tune being the very familiar one of auld lang syne associated in my mind however with occasions somewhat widely diverse from this i assure you i am thankful that my part is instrumental for the whole business is getting on to my emotions in a disturbing manner and especially when i allow my eyes to linger for a moment or two on the face of the lady the centre of the circle who is deliberately throwing away her fine culture and her altogether beautiful soul upon the anicum here and with a beautiful unconsciousness of anything like sacrifice is now thanking god for the privilege of doing so i have some moments of rare emotional luxury those moments that are next to tears then the padre offers one of those heart-racking prayers of his that whether they reach anything outside or not somehow get down into one's vitals and stir up remorses and self-condemnings and longings unutterable then they all kiss the mother and wish her a happy new year my boy my dear boy i have never known deeper moments than those and when i went to shake hands with her she seemed so like a queen receiving homage that without seeming to feel i was making a fool of myself i did the queen victoria act and saluted her hand it is wonderful how great moments discover the lady to you she must have known how i was feeling for with a very beautiful grace she said let me be your mother for to-night and by jove she kissed me i have been kissed before and have kissed some women in my time but that is the only kiss i can remember and so help me bob i'll never kiss another till i kiss my wife and then and there maitland i swore by all that i knew of god and by everything sacred in life that i'd quit the past and be worthy of her trust for the mischief of it is she will persist in trusting you puts you on your honor noblesse oblige business and all that i think i told you that i might end in being a saint that dream i have surrendered but by the grace of heaven i'm going to try to be a man and i am going to play shinny with those boys and if i can help them to win that match and the big game of life i will do it as witness my hand and seal this first day of january eighteen blank j c end of chapter thirteen